Hi, welcome to this week's uh, midweek warm up. I keep forgetting what it's called. It's kind of sad. Um, it's a video. Yeah. So today we're uh, continuing in Job 2. Um, kind of an interesting bit that I think I always rush over. Like, just kind of She's pass over. Not pass over. Being... She's a Russian having pass over. <laughs> Okay, so we are in the outdoors in the church again in Missoula because we were going to record in Shelby this morning, but we forgot. <laughs> it's been a long drive. Yeah. We drove for eight hours today and it's seven hours day. yesterday, so we didn't even go anywhere. We're still here. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to be in Job chapter 2, verses 11 through the end of the chapter. And it reads, now in Job's three friends heard all of this adversity that had come upon him, each one came from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Nemethite, for they had made an appointment together to come out and mourn with him, and to comfort him. And when they raised their eyes from afar and did not recognize him, they lifted their voices and wept. Each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head toward heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. So this passage is obviously continuing after Job not only had all of his stuff die, he had his kids die, kids. and Life. then Satan thought that wasn't good enough, so he asked if he could basically kill Job, and God said, no, but you can make him really sick. And so he had boils all over his entire body, which if you ever had a boil, that's really fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you mentioned the whole pot shirt thing last week. Yeah, that's just plain nasty. Uh, yeah. And it's not a good idea to scratch your boils with shards of glass or ceramics. Bad idea. Yeah. But this is where Job is still kind of in the right. He hasn't been acknowledged as sinning yet. But we'll find out later that he clearly is. But when you think about it, Job's been sitting here for a week with his friends. And who knows how many weeks it was already that happened to everything. And he's sitting there for a week with his friends and they're being good friends at this point so the first rule in counseling is if you're doing grief counseling you want to be with someone your job is not to solve their problems your job is not to talk to them your job is to sit there and listen if they want to talk you talk otherwise you sit there you be quiet and you just be with them we are made to need people to be with us when we're grieving and it's not because we need them to talk, we need them to fix their problems, we need them to do anything. It's, we just need to know that people are still around and they still exist. Because it may be the loss of someone very important to you, to the world, probably not. And that's just how it's made. People are important to people. Sometimes people aren't important overall. Obviously we had lots of people die recently that were big names like uh, Billy Graham died. Obviously not terribly recently, but recently. And big change in Billy Graham dying was he's not the head of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association anymore. Yeah. They still publish his books. They still play his videos. Nothing really has changed for the world. For his family, obviously, he's gone. But overall, nothing's happened. So to Job, obviously, his family's gone now. Except his wife, who isn't really mentioned much after her earlier instance. And there's not much going on with them, but to Job, his world is ending. And so his friends are there to help him with that. And they start by doing a good mm -hmm. job by just sitting there and being with them. And that's very important. And this is a thing that God does for us all the time. The issue is that people go through things where they're grieving and have problems. And they cry out to God, but God's already there with them. And obviously, if you're not a Christian, then... That's kind of your own problem. But for Christians, God is there present with you all the time. And if he's not there, it's because you walked away from him. And so it's like the Footprints poem that they wrote in sometime in the last century. And there's always one set of footprints on the beach in the hard times. And a person asks God, why weren't you there? And God says, I carried you then. And that's what God's doing here, even for Job. But his friends are. They're there to do a good thing, but that's pretty much where it ends. And we're not going to get into the very long diatribe of what they get into, because that'll come later. But 
let's just say for this point, they're doing a very good job of being friends. They're trying to be there for Job. They're there to take care of him, to give him just friendship while he's going through his grief. Yeah. Um, well, and it says that they made an appointment. So it wasn't like they just kind of happened by. They all heard what was happening and they agreed. They decided together to come and just support him and be there for him. And um, it really is sometimes the smallest little thing, a hug. It doesn't even have to be words. Just somebody's presence, somebody's confirmation that, you know, you're valuable, that you matter. Um, I don't know. I, I think, like you said, counseling-wise, um, especially when somebody's hurting, I have a hard time zipping my lip and just being quiet because I want to fix problems. I want to make people feel better. Um, and I think that there have been lots of times where I... I wanted to help and my rambling, I knew it, like I could see it, that it wasn't helping. It wasn't necessarily, I don't know, sometimes it actually just makes it worse because I start rambling about, I don't know, try, trying to find something encouraging and, you know, grief is a normal, natural thing to deal with. It's just when we get stuck in that and don't. Complete, I guess, grieving. Grieving is a process. It yeah. starts at one point and then it has to end. If you keep staying in that process instead of letting it complete, you're never going to be done with it. And it's going to cause major problems for you. Well, and sorry, that doesn't mean that, okay, you're done grieving, you're, you're never going to miss that person again or those people in Job's case. It's a matter of the grief is. A process of dealing with the loss and dealing with them not being there anymore and once you've kind of completed I say completed it's not a checklist it's not a set given amount of time although a lot of cultures have put specific time frames on it like most cultures there just American though <laughs> it's I don't know. It's an expected thing that you're going to grieve, but that once the grief is over, well, once the grieving is over, you'll still have moments and times like my mom passed away in 2017. And there are times, I mean, out of nowhere, I'll just, I'll think of something about her and I'll just miss her and grieve that she's gone. But at the same time, I also know that I have hope because she was a Christian and I know that she's now in heaven singing and restored um, completely. So so. <laughs> no, but she's singing and that's something she loved to do. So, um, but I guess my point is just that the Job's friends come and all I ever remember hearing about Job's friends is how awful they were or how like, they gave really bad advice, basically. But this section, like you said, Nathan, it's they're doing what they should do should be doing. They're taking care of him and just being there for him. So Well it's like Emily said, it until they open their mouths, they were doing what they're supposed to do. And that's where we come run into problems frequently, is that we talk when we shouldn't. We open our mouths because we want to say something. Sometimes because we want to have the last word, sometimes because we feel like we should be helping. Sometimes helping just means being there. And so the thing to notice here is that, like Emily said, his friends met and made an appointment together to go help. Grief is not supposed to be something you do by yourself. It's not supposed to be something where, oh, my spouse died. I'm going to go hide it in the woods for the next year. People do that. It's not going to help anything. Mm -hmm. And it's not the job of the pastor to make you get through grief. These are, are his friends. They're people that he loves, that spend time with. And they're supposed to work together to help people through it. And that's what we're supposed to do today. But so often we look at grief and say, oh, well, you need a counselor. You need a pastor. You need a priest. No, you need your friends. They need to be friends. Mm -hmm. 
and that's where the big thing is is that we need people to be what God has called them to be and everyone has been called as Christians to be family and friends to other Christians be neighbors and if you're not going to be that then you're not doing your job and that's not an accusation towards anyone in particular it's just that's the reality of life is Christians throughout history have had problems with that and it's not an American issue it's a human issue, issue yeah. It has to do with people. And so Job's friends started out doing a good job, and then they proceeded to screw it up majorly. But so did Job. Job started out well, and it says here very clearly that um, Job went, and in all this, Job did not sin with his lips in verse 10. But then he had a week to sit there and think about things. And when we have time to think, we tend to cause problems. And so we'll get into Job's problems that he gets later on. But for now, that's really what you need to focus on is that spending time with people is a good thing. People can be frustrating. People can be irritating. But we're made to spend time with people even if we are introverts like I am. He doesn't believe me, but I'm an introvert as well. I, I am. I enjoy speaking with people. You're just antisocial. I'm an introvert. So there's the difference. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoy socializing with small groups, especially, you know, just a few people or one on one. But there are still, I mean, I still enjoy my time just sitting by myself and reading or praying or singing when nobody can hear me. So. Just remember, if you need any work done, call her, not me, because I won't answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, I, so I'm apparently the secretary, um, which I knew already. I mean, he's been calling me his secretary since we got married, so. It's her job. <laughs> anyway. She's good at it. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, so, yeah, just, I guess, consider that this week and think, think about I mean, I guess we, we talked a little bit about, um, Ashes and dust. well, we talked about mourning and whatnot, um, and the, you know, the traditions and there's not necessarily, we couldn't, I couldn't find anything in scripture that expressly says, this is how you're supposed to mourn. But there are lots of things that are seen throughout scripture that torn clothing, the sackcloth, the ashes, and each of those things are kind of talked about at different places. Um, but um, we were talking about, there was something else in the New Testament that correlated, and I can't remember. No idea you're talking about. I don't remember. I have my brain. Old Testament. So, no, there was something that we the talked about that was in the New Testament that I thought correlated, and you said it would be fine to point it out. I don't know. I don't remember because this is how I write notes. I write just enough that I'm like, oh, I'll remember what that is. And I'm sure some of you probably. That was yesterday. Yeah. When we were supposed to record this video. Yesterday was a long time ago. So. It was. It's 24 hours ago. <laughs> Thank okay. you. You're welcome. <laughs> but getting back to what she was saying is the ashes here. And so throughout the Old Testament, you have people rubbing themselves with ashes and tearing their clothes and laying in sackcloth. And so. She's not the only person to ask, what is the purpose of the ashes here in mourning? And it's a reference to a burnt sacrifice. And so when you have a burnt sacrifice, obviously it's burnt. And so its remnant is ash. And so the people are showing that the thing has been given up and they are in mourning now by showing that they are acknowledging the sacrifice of whatever it is that is now gone by rubbing themselves down with ash. And that's really messy. I would recommend doing it. Besides, where are you going to get ash at nowadays? Are you going to start your furniture on fire? That's a gas fireplace. Yeah, to, this one's a gas one. It doesn't make ash. Well, it shouldn't. It makes ashes because <laughs> something else is burning in there. But ash is not a normal substance in our life today because we don't use fire for Campfires, those things. But... Where are you going to do a campfire in a city? <laughs> or the church. Yeah. That's a bad idea. Yeah. There are not supposed to be homeless people burning buildings down. But it happens. But nowadays we don't have ashes because we don't do burnt sacrifices as much. 
It's very rare in America for anyone to do that. And so that has passed out of our understanding of what we do for morning. We have lots of other things. We still have people that go and cry and wail loudly and lots of other things like that. We have great side services and we have funerals, which those aren't biblical things. They just changed over time. Yeah. But when you read about it in the Bible, it's because they are making a reference to things being gone and burnt sacrifices. Is, is it somewhat acknowledging the ashes, acknowledging that God is the one who gives and takes away? Well, he gives and takes away, and then ashes turn back into dust, and that's what we're made of. And so yeah. it's a process and cycle of things dying and new things being born. Just to clarify, I'm pretty sure no Jews would have burned their families. and Because cremation was not a... A thing they were and there's no reincarnation it was either looked down upon so uh but they would burn their cows and their sheep and their goats and, as sacrifices and specifically so anyhow um let us know if you have any questions comments or um or if you like fire <laughs> or if you like fire and uh we'll see you guys next week actually hopefully we'll have a video oh, for saturday, saturday. So, if the internet then. works. <laughs> All right. Oh, did you want to pray? Oh, I suppose I should. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. So, dear Lord, Dad, we thank you for this day and thank you for keeping us safe while we drove. Just ask that you be with those who are watching and listening and just use them to bring glory to your name throughout their areas where they're at. Just help us to learn about the Bible and to learn about you through it. And we thank you for you giving it to us and for giving your son to save us all. In your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. So. Have a good evening. Thanks. Bye.